All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's see if we can figure out how to graph the sine curve along with other additions to the sine curve. So just a quick review, we know that f of x equals sine of x. If we were to graph this guy, you got to know what the basic function looks like, okay? So um, what does the basic function look like? Well, first things first, let's draw a nice little handy dandy curve here. We know the amplitude is 1. Why so? Because there's a 1 sitting in front of the sine. Okay. What else do we know? We know that it happens periodically. And what do we mean by periodically? Every 2 pi, you get a, you get a sine graph. Okay. So if you divide this 2 pi into 4 pieces, you end up getting pi in the middle, pi over 2, and then 3 pi over 2. Easy peasy. We've already known this from class. Okay. Now, and if you remember the graph, um, if you remember your sine, uh, your unit circle from the previous YouTube, you'll see that at the sine, the y at 0, or the sine at 0 is 0. The sine at pi over 2 is 1. The sine at pi is 0. 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And finally, at 2 pi, it's also 0. Okay, so you guys already know this. So if you connect the dots, this is what your sine curve looks like. Easy. And of course, it repeats on forever this way and forever this way because obviously um, you can go around the unit circle as many times as you want. So this is where the sine curve came from. So let's look at what happens when we have additions to the actual function itself. So for example, we need to use the original function and transform this guy into a guy with an amplitude of 3 and a guy that is compressed into period that is twice as fast. So what this means is, is that this sine curve won't happen in just two pi, uh, over 2 pi. It's going to happen over something that's much smaller because it's happening quicker. So it looks something like that. Okay, But let's go ahead and graph it in big detail. So it should be compressed over. And just to give you an idea what that means, so let's say we were starting with the original sine curve, like this guy that I have in Microsoft Word. I'm going to have to compress this or expand it from the original. So if it happens over a different period, it will have to be stuck. The entire graph, if you notice the entire thing compressed, kind of like a spring. Okay, And that's what happens when we have these numbers, when we have these numbers that happen on uh, inside the function before we take the sine or the cosine of it. Okay, We're going to have to really, really see what, this, what happens with it. So let's graph this guy. Now keep your mind the original graph of the sine curve um, as we do this, okay? So, f of x equals 3 sine of 2x. First things first, since we know what the sine curve looks like, if you need to stop the video and go back and look at how we got the sine curve, okay? And then come back. <clears throat> so first things first, to find a new period, this whole idea of compression of that sine curve, you got to start with the old period. And this is what we do. We're going to divide the old period by a number. And the number we're going to divide by is this number. Okay? So we end up dividing by 2. Okay? Now, the question is, is now, what is the old period? Well, you got to know your sine chart. And if you remember the sine curve, it happens over 2 pi. So this is the old period. Divide that by 2, and we end up getting that it's going to happen over pi. That means this new sine curve won't happen over a 2 pi length, but just a pi length. Okay? Now, moving on. The amplitude. And if you, what do we know? What is the amplitude again? The amplitude is this guy right here, this 3. Okay? So we know that the amplitude is 3, meaning that the highest part on the curve won't be 1 anymore. It'll be 3. So we know that the amp is 3. Okay? And then finally, um, there's this idea of those points. Remember those points I just shelled out? It was 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and finally 2 pi. Those are four points that happen uniformly throughout the curve. But if it compresses, if it compresses, once again, if one of them by compresses, this is pi, uh, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Well, if this compresses uniformly and it has to be over pi, where is pi at? Pi is right here, so I have to push this whole sine curve into this pi. Notice the high point, which was normally, which was normally occurring at pi over two, it can't occur at pi over two anymore. It had to move. See, it had to move. Same thing down here. This guy over here, 
that was occurring at 3 pi over 2, that negative 1, he has to move too. So where are they occurring at? We need to know what mark goes here and what mark goes here. And, and once we figure those out, we'll be good to go. Well, how do we do it? Well, we look at what's called the sub intervals. And this will help us map it out, okay? And all the sub interval is, is you're going to take the new period. And since there are four big spots, you're going to divide it by four, okay? So here, that means the new period we just calculated is pi. So this is just going to be pi over four. So that means we have all the inf information we need to graph. So here we go. Let's see if I could do it in this little space here. So this means if I were to graph this, Okay, the highest point should be 3. The lowest point should be negative 3. Why? Because it has an amplitude of 3. And then, the, the whole period of this crash should happen over pi. But good news, there are these four hatch marks we just talked about, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, and each unit interval should be pi over 4. Pi over 4, pi over 4, and pi over 4. So check this out. This will be pi over 4, this would be 2 pi over 4, or you might say pi over 2, and this is 3 pi over 4. How'd I get that? Just add them together. Add them together. Okay, and then your graph ends up looking like this beautiful blob. So it's going to be at 0, it's here. In the moment, notice the sine curve goes high next, then middle, then low, and then back to the middle. So I'm not connected to the dots. And of course, it's going forever. But this is just one period. So this is what this curve would look like. It's pretty outstanding. It's pretty outstanding. It's really, really not hard. You just got to figure out what the new period is, and the subintervals, and the amplitude, and you're ready to rock and roll. And it's the same way with cosine. You just got to know what cosine looks like. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it for 5.3, 5.4. Uh, now, um, let's go ahead and do a cosine graph just to make sure we have good understanding. Okay, so you have f of x equals, I'm going to do this much faster because I'm running out of time on my video, and I'm trying not to keep these too long. Um, remember, at 0, cosine is 1. At pi over 2, cosine is 0. At pi, he is negative 1. And then finally, at 3 pi over 2, he's 0 again. And finally, 2 pi, he looks like this blob. And this is the same thing that we had notes in class. Okay, so that's kind of what cosine looks like. Okay, of course he goes on forever. Okay, so now it's the same kind of idea. You want to compress, expand, contract the whole nine yards. So let's do one of these that is similar to the previous one we just did. So I'm going to erase this. Let's do f of x. And let's give it an amplitude of 5, cosine. But this time, instead of compressing it, let's expand it. I want to expand this by one-third x, okay? So let's figure out our new period. That's always going to be our first goal. New period, like I said, is the old period divided by a number. Well, what's the number? This is the number, the coefficient on that x. So the new, so this is going to divide by one-third. Well, what's the old period of cosine? If you need to, stop the video, go back and look at the graph we just erased. Cosine happens on one interval of 2 pi. It's, exact thing of, it's the exact same of sine. So this is 2 pi over 1 third, which gives me 6 pi. So that means my sub-intervals, if I divide my, old, my new period into four pieces, each piece should be 3 pi over 2. Pretty good. So i got to speed up on here. And notice your amp is 5. So here we go. Let me see if I can do this quick, fast, in a hurry. Here's 5, here's negative 5. So this should be 3 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2, or just regular right old 3 pi, 9 pi over 2, and finally 12 pi over 2. Notice 12 pi over 2 is just 6 pi, which should be. Okay, and it starts high, goes low, goes to 1, comes back up, and goes out. Pretty simple. All right, guys, the next video would actually let you guys know how to shift, reflect, and rotate these guys. All right, see you on the next slide.